Hey traders, Mike Sir here. I came across this article talking about a drunk trader who went on to buy over 7 million barrels of oil. And it reminded me of a careless incident that happened to me over 20 years ago. Well, apparently this trader in the UK ended up losing over $10 million. So in this video, I'm going to share with you more details of the story of an oil trader named Stephen Perkins who lost millions of the company's money. And please make sure you stick till the end of the video where I'll share my embarrassing story with you. Since 1998, Stephen had been an employee of PVM Oil Futures, which is the world's largest independent broker of oil trading instruments based in London, UK. Now he had climbed the ranks in the company to become a senior broker in Brent Crude Oil in the company's International Commodities Futures Division. Now, Steve's role was to execute all trades on behalf of his clients, but he was not allowed to trade utilizing PVM's money. But on May, June 29th, 2009, everything changed for him. Stephen was technically not in the office on that day as he was just returning to London in the morning from a company-sponsored golf weekend, and he had been drinking heavily throughout the entire weekend. Now, Stephen continued drinking at around midday at his home, and around this time, he made some trades which were on behalf of a client. But later on that day, he suffered an alcohol-induced blackout. According to trading records, beginning around 1 a.m. UK time on June 30th, and for over two and a half hours, Stephen bought 7 million barrels of oil futures contracts worth a value of $520 million. At that time, the amount he traded was equivalent to 69% of the total trading volume of oil, or 10 times the average trading volume. Now by 6.30 a.m. in the morning, Stephen sobered up and probably having realized what he had done, he sent a text message to his boss informing that he won't be in the office that day. But an hour later, he received a call from an administrative clerk at PVM who inquired about the unauthorized oil trades that he had earlier made. Now, Stephen tried to make up an excuse that the trades were on behalf of his clients, but a few hours later, PVM realized that this was not the case and went into full panic mode to try to rid themselves of the massive oil positions that Stephen had built. Before I share the details of the oil trade, please take a moment to like this video. I would really appreciate your support. Alright, let's analyze and break down the drunken trade that Steven made. Now, first of all, there are two oil price benchmarks that traders reference, and it's due to where the oil originates from. And the first one is Brent crude, which accounts for two thirds of all crude oil contracts traded around the world and oil typically originates from oil fields in the North Sea. Now the other one is West Texas Intermediate where oil is extracted from wells in the US and sent via pipeline to Cushing, Oklahoma where oil is stored. In Stephen's case, he was trading Brent crude oil futures contracts. Now let's take a look at the Brent crude oil chart and try to piece together exactly what Steven did. You can see on this chart of Brent crude oil that the price had risen from around $71.40 to around $73.50 per barrel on June 30th. Basically an increase of $2.10 per barrel. And this basically helped push oil to its highest price in eight months. Now apparently in Steven's drunken induced buying of oil, had basically had contributed to the majority of the oil prices rise and specifically Stephen had single-handedly pushed up oil prices over a dollar and fifty cents a barrel in a matter of a few hours. Now this type of price action in oil is generally only due to major geopolitical events or OPEC supply decisions. Now unfortunately for Stephen, after the initial oil price surge, the trend reversed sharply, and you can see on the chart here that the price collapsed to under $60 in a matter of days. 
Now, in the end, PVM acted quickly to cut their losses, but it still suffered losses of almost $10 million. Now, to give you a context of how big that loss was for PVM, the company only generated $12 million in annual revenues at the time and had to report a loss of over $7 million. Now, fortunately, the company acted quickly to sell off the entire 7 million barrels of crude oil futures contracts, or they probably would have faced catastrophic losses or even bankruptcy. In the aftermath of the incident, Stephen was promptly suspended by PVM and proceeded to join an alcoholics rehabilitation program. In June 2010, the Financial Services Authority, which is the UK regulator for the financial services industry, barred him from working as a trader for a minimum of five years and fined him a total of $100,000. Now, this amount was actually reduced from $200,000 after Stephen expressed concern that it would cause him undue financial hardship. Now, when delivering the report, a regulator for the FSA said that Stephen posed an extreme risk to the market when drunk. Fortunately for Stephen, two days after the FSA announced the sanctions, he was hired by Star Supply Renewables, which is a Swiss-based biofuels brokerage company. And his job was mainly to create training manuals for new recruits. Now, Star Supply promised not to allow Stephen to trade for the remainder of his probation period, and they justified his hiring by stating that they considered him a good man who did a stupid thing. Now, Stephen has since disclosed that he has remained sober since that incident. There's really only one lesson that you can learn from this incident. And I'll share a similar story that happened to me about 20 years ago. So at that time, I just started trading full time and I was mainly day trading, meaning I don't hold any positions overnight. And it was getting close to the market close on a Thursday. And I was just st actually still holding this tech stock. Now, this tech stock was actually still quite strong. So I decided to hold on to it and sell it right at the market open the next morning. Now, later on in the evening, a few of my friends called me up and asked me to go for a drink with them. Now, I told them that I couldn't because I had to wake up early the next day to trade the markets. Now, obviously, my friends were very, very persuasive and they said, you know, just come out for one drink. And obviously, you know what happened next. One drink turned into many drinks and I actually didn't get home till 3 a.m. that morning. So I was a little bit hungover and not feeling my best, but I still woke up at 5.30 in the morning to watch the markets so I can sell my stock for a profit. Well, the markets opened very, very strong at 6.30 a.m. and my stock was up actually $500. Now $500 profit at that time to me was really, really good and I was like super happy. So I hit the sell button and exited the trade with a profit of $500. So I didn't turn away from my computer for a bit and I was kind of deciding you know, whether I should head back to bed. Well, I was about to close my trading platform and turn off my computer when I realized that I actually hadn't sold my stock yet. And in fact, I had doubled the number of shares that I was holding. What I didn't realize was I actually, instead of hitting the sell button, I pressed the buy button instead. And I saw my profit go quickly from $500 all the way down to $200 in a matter of minutes. And by the time that I exit my entire position, I actually ended up losing $50 on that trade. So the lesson here is don't drink and trade. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to watch other videos, please click on the left for more videos like this and click on the right for the full playlist. I'll see you on the next video.